now the interstitial growth is growing from within now the hyaline cartilage being a structure without any perichondrium perichondrium acts like a periosteum but here in hyaline cartilage there is no perichondrium so there is no oppositional growth whatever the growth that has to happen it has to happen from within now what is happening with age is the cartilage is becoming more and more dense thicker right and it is becoming more and more brittle the collagenous structure is becoming lesser and lesser fibrillated and they are decreased in number and size the water content is also decreased the glycosamine glycan contents are decreased and once this is happening as you are aging right there is hardening of the matrix with age right the soft resilient structure whatever was there till today is not there as we are aging and once this is happening right this is more and more becoming like a fibrous cartilage than a articular hyaline cartilage when this is this change is happening the cells which are there in it are no more in a phase to convert themselves into blastic cells that is from chondrocytes to chondroblast and form this new cartilage matrix which is soft enough so as you are aging because the surrounding structures are also becoming hardened now these structures do not allow these chondrocytes to change themselves into chondroblast and form a new cartilage which would be forming a new cartilage which would be just like the cartilage which you have and i have now now as we are aging there is a reflex inhibition from the surrounding matrix on these cartilaginous cells hence what is happening with this is as you age once these changes which are occurring in the matrix are becoming permanent they are inhibiting the interstitial growth of the cartilage and hence the cartilage loss or degeneration once started it can't be reverted back it is a progressive disorder and it is a continuous disorder once started it can't come back that is a problem now we are facing with the hyaline cartilage why it is more important is once you go that way it can't come back so once you have damaged your articular cartilage gone you can't get it back until unless we go for some other therapies of newer origin like stem cell therapy and some other things which would i would be discussing okay that is the important thing you need to remember and hence robin's textbook of pathology describes there are still no satisfactory means of prevention of osteoarthritis and no methods for halting the progression why because these are the changes which are happening in the cartilage which will not allow the chondrocytes to form new cartilage matrix which would be soft which is soft resilient and which would function normally right got it now now let us come to the proper osteoarthritis what it is what are the etiological factors the risk factors for osteoarthritis suppose for you and me if it also i would whether you ask me if you ask me would i get an osteoarthritis then i should i should be in a position to ask you whether you have these risk factors or not age what is your age if you are hardly 25 years okay then <coughs> wait for 50 more years then you would be getting it right this, there is age by itself is a primary risk factor because it's a degenerative condition obesity if you have more weight what happens this weight has to be borne by these joints once these joints are bearing some weight the stress and strain pattern in these cartilage is more if the stress and strain is more the degeneration is more it is directly proportional so obesity is an independent risk factor actually if you load the joint more if you load the cartilage more it is more at stake next is trauma if you have injured your knee joint what is happening some amount of blood is getting collected in the joint now we want a synovial fluid which is nourishing the cartilage not the blood even if something is there other than synovial fluid it is detrimental to the cartilage that is what is happening in trauma so all traumatic conditions wherein there is hematrosis is no good to the cartilage or else once there is a trauma there might be direct damage to the cartilage also so once there is direct damage to the cartilage i told you these cells have very little capability if you compare the cartilage cell to the liver cell liver even if 75% of the liver is removed the rest of the 25% will regenerate and form the whole whole part of the liver but here it is not the case once the cartilage is gone it is gone then what are the cartilage cells which are there they are not in a position to go back and form the new cartilage as it is that is the most important thing you should remember am i clear right now metabolic conditions hemochromatosis uchronosis all these conditions definitely they affect the joint either in the anabolic way or catabolic way but all these things they affect the joint in a catabolic way hence ends up in 
early osteoarthritis and secondary osteoarthritis okay next endocrinal diabetes mellitus hypothyroidism acromegaly all of them have a direct effect on cartilage suppose we have seen diabetes patients are at more risk of developing early osteoarthritis and progress and progression of the osteoarthritis is also more in diabetic patients same like hypothyroidism next is mechanical i told you obesity now if you are loading the joint in an inadvertent way which is not good what happens over a period of time there is more wear and tear or more stress and strain happening at one portion of the joint and that is more prone for degenerative process so these mechanical factors loading patterns play a major important role in the development of osteoarthritis one is next is congenital and developmental problems if you have a developmental dysplasia of the hip the articular surfaces are not congruent or the articular surface or the joint per se is uh, not proper or if at all i have to use one word it is congruence that means the joint either is subluxated or completely dislocated or the joint forming surfaces are not regular right or not conforming what happens there are inadvertent forces acting upon the joint rather than loading forces there will be shear force acting on it hence ending up in early osteoarthritis second is occupation if you use the joint more you damage the joint more simple now having these risk factors at on one side there is a vicious circle of osteoarthritis developing altered mechanics loading of the cartilage altered mechanics in the joint lead to the destruction of the cartilage as well as chondrocyte death leading to what leading to loss of cartilage and once this cartilage is lost what is happening the resilient structure which is taking the strain is lost whole of the weight is now going to the bone once the weight is being transferred to the bone inadvertently there is lot of changes happen in the bone that, that is sclerosis of the bone new bone formation all those things they happen this is one part of it the second part is there is an abnormality in the synovial cells as i told you once there is a, de uh, a degradation of the cartilage these degraded products of the cartilage they go and inside the synovium they irritate the synovium to become hyperplastic and ultimately once the synovium becomes hyperplastic these cells keep on secreting some collagenases and other substances they come and again degrade the cartilage now they go into a vicious circle got it now abnormal synovial fluid and reduced viscosity now ultimately again they end up in one condition where the synovial synovium is hypertrophic that is synovitis and abnormal nociceptive in stimuli they come and you have joint pain once you have joint pain you have protective muscle spasm once you have protective muscle spasm you don't use that joint once you don't use that joint the muscles which are acting on the joint become weak once your muscles which are acting on the joint become weak again it comes down to a altered biomechanics of the joint once your altered bio, you have a altered biomechanics the loading pattern is changed the initial whatever the normal loading pattern of the joint which is there which is not causing this stress and strain which is actually loading the joint or else smooth gliding of the joint which is not possible because your muscles are already become weak ultimately it ends up again in this vicious circle so starts with something and also again comes back to the same thing and ends up in a huge destruction of a joint where articular cartilage is completely worn out right so ultimately the outcome is joint destruction severe pain loss of function of the joint disability right there is deformity and all these things ultimately you have a major economic burden happening the what, what is the pathology initially there is softening of the cartilage later on superficial fraying deep ulceration subchondral bone exposure and ultimately even the subchondral bone is also eroded over a period of time if you still walk on them right still load that joint now the synovium it becomes hypertrophic bone new bone formation will be there that is called as osteophytosis and ultimately they end up in capsular fibrosis and there is lot of bony remodeling happening you end up in deformities in the bone and there are ligament contractures on one side laxities on the other side you end up in a deformed joint having understood the pathology you should be in a position to diagnose a patient once he comes to you what do you do first you examine the patient clinically or you ask them the questions usually patients come with pain loss of movement or stiffness or inability to use the joint because of uh, various problems one is pain as well as this loss of movement both of them can make the patient not to use the joint next is instability because uh, because of muscle atrophy because of pain you are not using because you are not using the joint ultimately muscles become atrophied they are not in a position to support the joint anymore ultimately you end up in instability so patient can be coming with instability because of either joint incongruity loose bodies meniscal tears ligament injuries ligament degeneration over a period of time and then muscle atrophy ultimately they can come down with instability 
or patient can come with swelling patient can come with deformity flexion deformity of the knee right varus deformity of the knee there are all the uh, what i should say the clinical patterns with which the patient can come to you right now once the patient has come to you you examine you examine for normal range of motion you examine for any sinusoidal thickening you examine for medial joint line tenderness all these things they indicate or you examine the normal anatomical axis and mechanical axis of the knee joint suppose we are dealing with the knee joint right now if there is any change then you chart it down all those things on one side and now you go and take an x ray and the radiograph should be taken in standing position weight bearing position especially when you are dealing with the knee joint you load the joint and see exactly what is going wrong with it to see what is going wrong with it now once you take a radiograph you usually grade it grade 0 is normal knee joint grade 1 is this one mild narrowing of the joint space this is lateral side this is medial side so if you compare the lateral side to the medial side mild narrowing of the joint space is there and occasionally you can find osteophytes grade 2 there is narrowing of the joint space with subcondyl sclerosis right sometimes there may be cysts also subcondyl sclerosis and cysts grade 3 there is deformation of the joint has already started these are the loose bodies right sorry these are the osteophytes they can if they break up they become loose bodies right so there is a deformed joint here if you can see the joint deformation has already started and the joint space is narrowed but when you go to grade 4 there is complete narrowing of the joint space and if you can see here there is a loose body right from where this loose body has come all these degradation products they can agglomerate and become one loose body or if at all there is an osteophyte breaks up and can become a loose body all these cartilage debris whatever the synovium which is shedding because of the necrosis of the tips of the villi all of them they agglomerate and become these loose bodies right so as we go from 1 to 4 this is what you see now if you can directly go into the joint and see by putting something into it that is called as arthroscope your grading becomes even more better than your radiographs right so arthroscopic grading of osteoarthritis is far more better than radiographic grading but unfortunately this is a invasive procedure but you get a more clear picture grade 0 will be normal grade 1 will be that means if you pit the articular cartilage if you if you push the articular cartilage with the probe it pits to the pressure that is grade 1 that is softening or blebs or irregularities in the articular cartilage is grade 1 and grade 2 is superficial de- uh, fibrillation grade 3 is deep fibrillation and grade 4 is exposure of the subcondyl bone right these are all the changes you can see in arthroscope if you can see a smooth white glistening structure can be seen in an arthroscope this is normal and uh, if you go to the grade 4 osteoarthritis whole of the cartilage is gone right you can see the subcondyl bone here right now this these are the serological markers for osteo, uh, osteoarthritis one thing you might have already remembered in bone bone turnover markers i told you same like this there you have ctx1 collagen telopeptide 1 here this collagen 2c telopeptide ctx cross link it is 2 ctx2 is for articular cartilage just remember this portion and cartilage oligomeric matrix protein comp is a marker of cartilage turnover more specifically if you can see it in the synovium or synovial fluid or in the serum it is a very good marker for what for the degradation that is happening in the articular cartilage and ctx2 for cartilage degradation you can just see it in the urine so if at all i have to make you remember two things just remember ctx2 in the urine and comp in the synovial fluid or serum right